everyone. Shane McMurray from The Wedding Report. Uh, thanks for joining me on the podcast uh, uh, video cast show. Uh, this is the venue edition that we're doing. And today I'm meeting with Shauna. And she is from Jonesboro, Arkansas with a venue there. Shauna, thanks for being on the show. And I appreciate you being here. Tell us about your business. Thanks, Shane. Thanks for having me. So I own a Kingsman Estate. And it's located in Bono, Arkansas. So it's right outside Jonesboro. Um, so we're not in city limits. So it makes it a lot easier to hold events. Yeah. Is um, it more fun that way? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot more fun um, building and getting it ready. Because if you're in the county and not in city limits, you don't have any rules or regulations or things you have to submit or anything really? like that. So nice. made opening the venue a million times easier. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Um, and tell us, tell me a little bit about the venue. Like uh, how many guests can you guys uh, accommodate and, and what do you guys, you know, have on site that you offer? Sure. So uh, inside we have two different places we can hold events. So the first place we call our party room. So a lot of people rent it for birthday parties, bridal showers, baby showers, it will only hold about 30 to 40 people. Okay. And then um, for bigger events like a wedding, a lot of times that area is used for cocktail hour or um, maybe a food buffet. And then they go down the hallway to our ballroom. Okay. Our ballroom will hold about 85 comfortably, but we can fit up to 100. Okay. Um, so we have that inside portion, but... We have 19 and a half acres, so we've had an event up to 300. They just rented a tent and had, you know, their reception and stuff outside. Um, they use the venue mainly for our bridal and groom suite upstairs because we have the largest and most luxury bridal and groom suite in our area. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, that's like, uh, you got to have that, right? Like for mm -hmm. you know, a way to get a place to get ready and all that stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Do you guys have accommodations for people to stay on site? We don't, but we do allow, like, we have an extra add-on where they can stay the night. Like, they can bring, like, blow-up mattresses and stuff. Oh, okay. We have a couple of futons, but we don't have, like, nice accommodations to stay. Like, it's more of they're all not decorating and they just, you know, go to sleep and then wake up for the wedding day. I, I got you. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then there's obviously there's combinations nearby, right? You guys are near Dome. Mm -hmm. so. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so do you guys offer catering? Is there like a kitchen? Um, do you, I mean, do you, the rentals come with it or do they have to rent stuff separately or do you guys just the space? So um, we do have a catering room. It has just um, like table, like a stainless steel serving table, a, commercial fridge we have a freezer mm -hmm. the basic stuff but we don't have any like stoves or anything like that downstairs we right. do have a full residential kitchen upstairs in the bridal suite that they can use um but catering doesn't want to you know go upstairs and come back down so right. yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do include linens in our rental so we include up to 20 and then after 20 if they want more they can add that on i got you uh, we are partnered with, we were recently partnered with Elegant Party Rentals for linens, but now we have had a, we have a partnership with White Door Events out of Memphis. Oh, okay, cool. So they are amazing. Um, I'm trying to think. We have, I'm also a wedding coordinator and planner, so we do have that. We can add on if they want to do that. Okay. Um, and we also include a golf cart taxi. So the golf cart will hold up to six people. Um, we escort people from the house out to our private island where a lot of people have their ceremonies. So on the private island, you can fit up to 250 people ceremony style. We have a waterfall, a gazebo that has electricity. So DJ can have something to plug up to. We have a pretty chandelier. Like it's gorgeous. So this um, so is a island in the middle of like a lake or what? <laughs> a two acre pond really awesome mm -hmm. and, and it has a bridge a wooden bridge that goes out to it 
Oh, okay, cool. So that that that's how obviously how people get out there. Otherwise, you're gonna have to boat them over, raft them over, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, uh, but the bridge is kind of on the opposite side, so it it's a kind of a good walk. But a lot of people do choose the walk because they don't want to wait around for the golf cart to come back and forth. Sure. Uh, it's a flat flat ground, so it's it's not that bad of a trek. But a lot of people, you know, use the golf cart to get there and then walk back. I got you. Got you. Now, are there woods around or is it more of like open property kind of thing? It's more of open property. So right next to us is an, another pond. <laughs> and then it's like the really tall, pretty grass that hasn't been mowed, but it's like tan. Like people love it. Like it's dead grass. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, got you. Yeah. But everybody absolutely loves it and takes pictures in it. And yeah, it. It's crazy, but because yeah. we were going to mow it down and we were talking to a bride and she's like, no, please don't. I want pictures in it. And then the photographer said the same thing. And we were like, OK, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> D does it ever turn green or is it mostly brown all the time? It turns green like at the beginning of spring, oh, but most okay. of the time it's brown all the time. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've seen those fields, right, where they got the tall grass and, you know, during mm -hmm. certain times of the year, it's mostly brown. <laughs> but then, you know, yep. at the right time, it's beautiful and green and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. but it's still pretty cool, though, right, to see that just right in that area. Yeah. So it's, yeah, pretty open back there. There is a tree line that separates, like, our property from the other property, but yeah. that's about it. Okay, cool. Excellent. Um, and, um, tell me a little bit about like what, you know, what gets you excited about doing this type of work and why you got into it? Well, I got into it because I've been a wedding planner for five years and I kept seeing having brides want something not rustic and not country. They want something more elegant, more classic, and just kind of a clean slate mm -hmm. and we didn't really have but one maybe two ish if they want to kind of slightly still say country but clean slate <laughs> um, and so they kept looking you know outwards towards memphis and towards central arkansas and i was like well we need something else here so i started looking it was actually during COVID. so in 2020 uh oh. fall of 2020 is when i started looking and um has submitted nine business plans to different banks and got no's on an other property that we had found. And then after that ninth one, I actually got a call from my realtor mm -hmm. saying that this place was on the market. It was actually a foreclosure. So it was cheap. <laughs> so we went out there and we're like, okay, yeah, we'll put a bid in, you know, thinking we probably won't get it. I mean, I was 28, my husband's 26. So it's like, we're not going to get this bid. <laughs> we bid like 1500 over the asking price or 1600 mm -hmm. And then we get the call out of 10 bids. We were the highest bid and got it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably because you bid over, right? And everybody's like, oh, this is in foreclosure. We're going to bid under. And then, yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's what our realtor told us to do. But he said, expect somebody to bid higher because this place is worth, you know, twice as much as what, you know, they're mm -hmm. asking for it. And, um, yeah, so we, we ended up getting it. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they were kind of, we were all shocked. Like, realtor, my, my parents, me, I was like, holy smokes. Like, this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> this is really so happening. Then, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, then... It just kind of went from there and we renovated it in, let's see, we started renovations in April and we opened July 7th nice. of 2021. Okay, excellent. So we you're turned just, it around pretty quick. Yeah, you're just right, you're right at a year, just over a year, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's great. Congratulations. And then what probably gets me most excited is when... To be honest, when the bride has a bigger budget and they just go all out in decorating and it just looks amazing. Like yeah. I get so excited and I can't wait for the pictures to come back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's that's I my agree. that makes sense to me too, because you know, you're not you're not trying to you're not limited and you're not trying to, you know, constrain everything and figure out, you know, it just mm -hmm. makes makes life. Which pictures are kind of more 
our style to pull out. Like, but when they go all out, it's like, oh my gosh, we're going to have so much marketing material. <laughs> it's going to be fun. And, you know, yes. they're going to have a lot of, you know, enjoy it. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so tell me, uh, like, what's the process do you guys have in place today when someone books with you? And, you know, do they mostly come online? Do they mostly come from calling you? How, how's it happening today? So it mostly comes online. So we have a form they fill out on our website, like everywhere on our Instagram, on our Facebook website. It always directs them to this form because mm -hmm. when they fill out this form, they go into our database and get their first email that's automated. Yeah. And then after that, we will check their date, make sure it's available. And then we will send them another email saying, hey, congratulations, your date's available. Mm -hmm. Um you can go to this calendar and I give them a link and schedule a tour with us and meet us in person. Yeah. So then they do that. We meet them in person. We give them a tour. Most of the time, um, the last time I checked, we are about 75% booking rate of people who actually come and tour. That's awesome. Uh, yes. You. Yes. Yeah. Um, Cause once they come, I mean, everybody, I mean, it's, it's, Awesome. Nobody has the bridal or groom suite like us. Like nobody even really has a groom suite bigger than a closet around here. So we have this huge groom suite with, you know, pool table, dartboard, full reclining set, you know, oh, yeah. then they have an extra changing room, a full bath and shower. I mean, it's luxury compared to everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're totally loving that. Oh yeah. And then we allow them to fish in the pond if they want to. So Usually the guys are pretty sold if they come and tour. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah. 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 Cool. But um, yeah. And so after the venue tour, they, you know, go home. We send them, you know, a um, package quote so they can pick what package they want, whether they want a Friday, a Friday, Saturday, 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 Sunday, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they pick that and invoice contract comes out to them and, Awesome. This goes from there. Pretty straightforward. You guys yeah. finding you getting most of your traffic from like social media or are they do are you are they coming through search? So it's probably half and half from Facebook and Google. Okay. Cool. Not you really guys, Instagram uh, for yeah. some reason. I've we've I've tried to keep on Instagram. I'm fairly new to Instagram, believe it or not. <laughs> it's okay. That's I totally I fun. like resisted Instagram for so long and that everybody's like, you've got to get your businesses on Instagram. I was mm -hmm. like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I haven't seen any, you know, ROI from it yet, but yeah. I'm still, I'm still trying. <laughs> are, are you doing, are you like, uh, so on Facebook, are you guys just posting content and stuff and getting interaction or are you guys actually like uh, putting out ads and stuff like that? Both. We do both. Okay, um, cool. So like if we have an event or something like we have bridal wars coming up in September. Nice. So that I have in an ad everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, but like the normal like booking stuff, I don't do ads on that very often, except during like the really busy engagement season times. Okay. Makes sense to me. Yeah. I mean, promote it. So tell me about bridal wars. What's this? So, Bridal Wars is actually a national event. The planners that are over it are actually out of New York. Um, they created this event to kind of get brides more excited for like a bridal show. So, it's vendors um, from across our area, which I'm the only one that's hosting Bridal Wars in Arkansas and Tennessee. So, I've been uh, advertising through out both states right so you're getting and, traffic uh, from everywhere kind of around yes. that's awesome yes yeah. because brides and their bridesmaids or whoever they want to compete with them all sign up as a team and then they go to each vendor booth and each vendor has a bachelorette style game for them to compete in and then the <laughs> winner gets this prize bag that um, we put together and the vendors put together so it's it's a lot of fun. Like we have lip sync competition. Awesome. We have um, a toilet paper wedding lingerie competition. <laughs> nice. Flip cup, mug shots. I mean, just all kinds of, you know, those fun bridal games that everybody plays at bachelorette parties. Nice. Nice. Sounds like a lot of fun and probably oh, yeah. a, a gr great way to get people together and, you know, mm -hmm. kind of have, have a little bit of 
fun to get to see this get to see your venue and that sort of thing right mm -hmm. meet, meet yeah like the venue our game that we host as the venue is a scavenger hunt so they flip over a card and it's a picture of one of our small decor items upstairs in the lounge area and so they have to run upstairs find that item and bring it back down so it kind of gives them Nice. Uh, makes them go up to our lounge area, you know, and see how awesome it is. <laughs> and then they have to search for that item and bring it back down. Yeah, yeah. smart. Sound, sounds like a good plan. Yeah, for sure. Um, how how long um, are people booking right now with you guys, uh, like in advance? And, and what, what are you seeing? Right now, um, since we're still pretty new, so every person that has booked is usually the first time they've heard of our venue. Okay. So um, we're still getting the word out. But right now, people are booking about eight to 12 months in advance. Um, this fall booked really, really quick. So this oh, fall, it was booked by December of last year. So it was a lot of them were booking a year in advance. Uh, Next yeah. fall, we're still pretty open. But it wasn't until, like I said, December when this fall was completely booked. So I imagine once we get through all these fall weddings or in the middle of it, we'll start to fill up next year. Like yeah, our spring is already filling up. So, yeah. Well, I mean, um, you know, this time of year is probably not much happening, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's really hot, muggy, <laughs> kind of, yeah. kind of not a great time to have a wedding outdoors, but. Oh um, no, definitely yeah. not. Our summer is really slow because I mean, we're more of an outdoor, you know, venue because we just have so much yeah. to offer outdoors. And it's 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 not fun. Yeah, and then <laughs> you have a couple of brutal months of winter, which yes, you know, yes, yeah, I yeah. Mean, December not, and January and February is not very popular for us either. Yeah, it's kind of hit or miss, though, right? Like some some weeks mm -hmm. might be pretty nice, but you never yeah. know, right? It, I know, I know exactly what you're, you're yeah. going through. But our grass is dead in the winter, so it's just not it's not, not cool. It's not, not pretty. pretty. <laughs> yeah. So I don't um, blame people not wanting to book during the winter months. I mean, it's just. Right. Um, if you get a snow, then it's really pretty. <laughs> yeah, if you can get some snow, yeah, I yeah. think that would be a problem. We need to we need to find somebody who does fake snow and then there you go. Yeah, can do the whole <laughs> whole venue, right? Fake yes. snow. Yes. Yeah. Uh what did you have any advice you'd give couples today that uh you know that that's looking to get it, you know, looking for a venue, that sort of thing? So it's don't be so set on a date before you get a venue. If you if there's a venue you want, contact them, you know, give them the date you're asking for. If they don't have that date, you know, try to be open to other dates maybe. Like ask what dates you do have open or what dates the venue suggests. Because right. the venue, I mean, they're going to know when their prime season is of when everything looks the best. Mm -hmm. So if you really want a, you know, gorgeous backdrop of a wedding, it's probably more benefit to you to ask the venue, you know, when's, when's the prettiest time at your venue. And yeah. then you will get, definitely get more for your money that way. Instead of, you know, maybe doing March, you know, you think, Oh yeah, it'll be pretty. I can tell you right now, it's not going to be, everything is just now turning green. If it's even green yet. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. I mean, Especially early March, right? Mm -hmm. Like this year, everything was really slow. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't till, mid late april until all of our stuff started turning gray yeah yeah that's that's crazy yeah how many weddings you guys do in a, can do in a weekend you guys do one a weekend or one a day or one a day we do have some that we do we have a sunday and i mean a saturday and a sunday wedding so we'll have to you know flip you know clean yeah. it and everything that night before um but me and my husband do it all so yeah, there you go are you guys so, doing like week weekday weddings like fridays or thursdays yeah, we do events through the week, too. Um, a lot of birthday parties like to do Sundays because it's considered a weekday rental, so it's cheaper. Oh, cool. Uh, we've had some Thursdays and Wednesday parties, you know. Nice. Um, but mostly Friday, Saturday, Sunday is what stays booked. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's when most people are doing parties and events anyway, mm -hmm. the weekend, right? For sure. Yeah. Um, is there anything like so when you guys first started, you know, couples were probably asking for certain things. Are there things that they're asking for today that they weren't asking for just maybe a year ago when you guys were getting started? Um, or you haven't seen since anything? we started, you know, after COVID, so we pretty much get, you know, 
the COVID questions, of course, yeah. and we have it in our contract, you know, what we, what our policy is. Um, but since we started after that, I don't feel like there's really anything. Yeah. I mean, I know venues that, you know, were around before the pandemic. I'm sure they're getting a lot more different questions. Sure. But um, since we started after, I feel like we haven't really had any other questions come up. Have you you've been in the how long you been in the planning business too? I know you're a planner. Five right? years. Five years. So would you say like five years ago when you started planning, would you say that what people are asking for today that you're seeing has that changed a bit? Definitely. I'm seeing a lot smaller weddings. Um, like I was used to doing, you know, 250, 300 person weddings. And then during COVID and after COVID, we're seeing more of like 80 to 100, mm -hmm. which I mean, that's what our venue holds. So it's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah. Uh, yeah, as a planner, I've seen a lot smaller weddings and brides a little bit more um, in tune with their budget and actually reading the contracts because of COVID. Yeah, you know, yeah, all those weddings that had all those yeah. contracts that, you know, didn't allow for them to reschedule or get their money back or anything like that. So I find that the brides are definitely more in tune with what the contract says and read it before they actually pay the deposit and book them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, just from my years of research, I've always noticed that the Midwest has always had a lot more guests in their weddings mm -hmm. uh, in general. And uh, yeah, I mean, totally seeing the numbers come down everywhere mm -hmm. for, for a number of guests. Cutting so. guest list down. And yeah. I mean, it's, you know, that if you're going to cut costs, that's the first mm -hmm. thing to do is just get rid of And guests. <laughs> I think another reason is during COVID, I mean, everybody wasn't able to socialize. So their friend groups, you know, really shrunk yeah. down yeah. and um, they found out who matters the most during COVID and that's who they invite. And so yeah. they don't invite, you know, Aunt Susan or friend Susan <laughs> up in Michigan that they hadn't seen in 10 years. They're like, yeah. I know. You know, so, I mean, I think that's a big, big reason for the smaller guest count as well. It's just everybody found out who who their friends and family really were during that time. Uh, do, do you also feel that uh, the couples are paying more for the cost of the wedding? So they have a little more say in what they're doing and, like, who, who they're going to invite? Yes. I have seen most of my weddings have been – the bride and groom are actually paying it all themselves. Yeah. Like maybe the parents bought the wedding dress or um, is going to pay for the bridal luncheon, mm -hmm. but it's, it's very small stuff. It's like not very, I mean, yeah, the couple's paying for the venue and then entertainment and the food and yeah. 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 And that gives them more, that feels like it gives them more power and say, I think in the whole. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, for sure. Mom and dad have somebody family. breathe it down their neck. Why'd you spend this much? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, hey, Shauna, last question. Um, if you had to go back three to five years ago, what would you tell yourself? Huh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's a hard one. <laughs> yeah. um, you will make it. <laughs> That's it's going to be hard, but it, it comes together. Um, plan for more than $5,000 in unexpected costs when you build a venue. Because <laughs> we yeah. had $30,000 of unexpected costs. <laughs> I believe you. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. But it all came together, and it will do great. Yeah. Good. 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 That's Great advice to tell yourself for sure. Yes. Because hey, it was a stressful time. <laughs> I, yeah, I bet. Right. I mean, building building anything is uh is stressful, right? Like, mm -hmm. but I you mean, know. Yeah, we didn't build it from the ground up, but man, we we pretty much rebuilt the inside. <laughs> yeah, I know I hear you. I hear you. I understand it totally. Yeah. Shauna, thanks so much for doing this. I, I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.